Good morning, everybody. I'm pleased to be here with you um, in order to present my work about how to bypass uh, data exfiltration detection by use of major cryptography. It is the second part of a work that I have presented last year in Activity 2021. It is an evolution, um, and I'm very pleased to be with you uh, today. So first, uh, I'm very proud to be a speaker at Positive Act Day. I was not able to come in due time because I have uh, tomorrow a critical business meeting and it was not possible due to the flight schedule to be with you here. But uh, if you have any question or any comments, I will, f uh, I will be free, uh, I will be very happy to, to exchange with you. Uh, I wish you um, a very nice PhD uh, 11 event. So here's the summary of my talk. So I will first introduce the topic, then present a state of the art of the different existing techniques and to show their limitation. I will then present a very um, useful tool in order to prepare this kind of, uh, of attacks, which are non-trivial denable cryptography. And I will then uh, show how to efficiently bypass um, data exfiltration detection um, by using statistical profile and mimicking and uh, even hijacking encrypted uh, channel in place, for example, an existing IPsec VPN in, in the target environment. So, um, nowadays, quite all uh, attacks, uh, especially the sophisticated attacks, uh, um, uh, aim at um, exfiltrating uh, data. It can be a few bytes uh, regarding a few credentials or login password or complete uh, data uh, databases. Uh, and generally, the exchange of data is, is done between the malware and the command and control. But it can be an attacker uh, himself. And depending on the environment, you have different uh, constraints. It is more or less difficult for the attacker. If you have unconnected environment, you have to enforce air gap attacks. But you will have a limited amount of data to, uh, that can be exfiltrated due to a generally low data rate. But on the contrary, the target are generally a very low security awareness. On the contrary, on connected network environment, whatever may be the protocol, in fact, uh, you have to bypass traffic surveillance. But if you are successful, you can exfiltrate a high, high amount of data with a high data rate. And generally, uh, what I observe in different uh, uh, network, that the awareness uh, con uh, regarding this kind of exfiltration uh, techniques of uh, rather medium. The defender himself can do either automated or semi-automated analysis, or in in, case, in very specific cases, for example, four and six steps, uh, he can perform manual or ad hoc analysis, which can include, for example, uh, malware re uh, reverse analysis, reverse engineering. So the context is uh, twofold. Either you consider um, weekly targeting attacks, and in uh, for environments where only very uh, only DLP software will be in place in place DLP for data leak prevention, um, or you want to perform a strongly targeting attacks, typically uh, APT attack. Mm. And uh, you can suppose that a manual analysis or even the traffic of the malware can be uh, analyzed. We will focus on connecting environment, but you can apply all the techniques presented uh, in this talk for air gap environment. You just have to adapt to the protocol and to the uh, uh, lower data ex uh, data rate. Once again, we want to focus on, bypass, uh, on automated analysis to, by, to be bypassed, but you, can, you have to keep in mind that the defender can perform more sophisticated analysis, uh, 
because you are you are dealing with sensitive networks. So uh, since you are uh, generally these kind of attacks are uh, enforced through uh, malware, you can support that the malware will be analyzed uh, statistically or dynamically, uh, and you have to take this into account. Another constraint is to consider the communication channel in place. We do not create new communication channels uh, or cover channel uh, such as in air gap attack. But if you want more information about this kind of attacks, you can drop me an email. From the attacker's perspective, he has two uh, critical points to consider. First, he has several critical issues to consider these issues refer uh, relates to the capability of the defender to detect something and then trigger alert and of course to block data exfiltration so you can have dlp software but most of the time they're working on keywords they don't really uh, implement statistical profile it means that mm, any dlp i have tested have been successfully bypassed they are very uh, rather lame at uh, uh, preventing and detecting uh, sophisticated data leak, uh, uh, data leak. Of course, you can encrypt your data, but you have to constraint. First, it is easily detected because the entropy for file is rather high. It is rarely in place. And if you want, however, use uh, encryption, you have to manage secret key. And the secret key can be recovered during the reverse engineering step. So you have an additional, very strong constraint. Finally, remind that in fact, all outbound traffics may be encrypted for typically IPsec VPN. And this encryption is not managed by the attacker. He cannot even access the keys. So he, he has to deal with in, and exfiltrate uh, his data uh, through this channel, which means that if you want to get the data, you will have a, a serious uh, issue. And you have also prevent the defender to detect that you are currently uh, exfiltrating data, or at least, but even if it is not uh, wishable, you have to delay his efforts. So, the aim of the present work is not to perform attack, of course, but it is to evaluate uh, what could be the evolution of uh, data uh, leak um, and uh, malware uh, attacker. Uh, I have precisely in mind some APT attacks or sof sophisticated ransomware, and the aim is to see how uh, these attacks could evolve in order to find um, before the attacker um, uh, mitigation and protection techniques. Uh, I, have, I, will, I have cho chosen to present uh, each attack brick one by one for uh, sake of clarity, but of course you can combine all of them uh, and uh, whenever you combine them, in fact, uh, you, you obtain very sophisticated and powerful attacks. The code are non-public, but uh, since they are developed for industrial purpose, uh, analysis purposes. So first, let us present the state of the art and the technical background. I mean, what are already the already known um, um, uh, already known uh, uh, exfiltration techniques. In fact, uh, whenever you consider uh, communication, I mean uh, data exfiltration, you have to consider two issues or two aspects. And I will take here the most, uh, uh, the most uh, used terminology from NATO. You have either communication security, which focus on the security of the data themselves, but regardless of the channel. So for that purpose, you have cryptography, electromagnetic security, physical security of the environment. But a, a clever attacker will also want not only to protect the data exfiltrated, but also to protect the fact that there is an exfiltration. It means that we want to protect uh, the existence of a secret communication and then protect the channel. And in this respect, the most 
none of the most famous techniques taken over a fee, but you also can consider electromagnetic security, traffic flow security, routing protocol, and so on. And in, in this study, we have combined both views. We want to protect the information, but also the channel itself. It means that any defender cannot see or guess that currently and that exfiltration takes place. So let us compare cryptography versus steganography. On the on the left, you have steganography. You have uh, cryptography. Sorry. So you transform any plain text data into uh, non uh, non plain text data, encrypted data with a secret key. And the data, once encry encrypted, looks like a random data. And we suppose in the security analysis that to recover plain text data, you have to uh, recover the key, which is supposed to be intractable. And even the algorithm is supposed to be known. On the right, you have a steganography. Steganography, you have here the, diff the complete process. So you take data, you encrypt them, you take a cover image. It may be an image, an audio file or whatever, video file, you will embed uh, in the, uh, to produce a stego image, you send it to Bob, and Bob will extract and decrypt. In fact, if we, uh, it is mandatory to have no visual difference between cover image and stego image, in fact, since you embed, you modify some bits or some data. Uh, and all the issue is to modify without too much altering uh, the statistical profile, which is rather uh, complicated um, in, in, in real cases. Let us compare that now the security of both techniques. Uh, whenever you use cryptography, you produce random data. So using uh, entropy test, it is very easy to detect a peak of entropy. Uh, for example, Plain text data for most languages uh, is around four. Once you packed or you compress the data, you, uh, the, the entropy rise to six. And whenever you encrypt, the uh, entropy will be maximal and you will have an entropy of eight. So it means that a simple entropy profile test, you are able to detect that uh, encrypted data are um, exfiltrated. On the, on on the right, you have a different um, results showing, in fact, I will summarize that. You will find, of course, references in, in, in the bibliography of the slides, but you can, uh, steganography has a very low rate if you want to uh, remain undetected. It means that less than 3% of, of the data can be used in order to um, uh, to embed uh, secret data. You have a very limited number of uh, uh, data uh, that can be hidden if you want to remain undetected. 3% means a few bytes uh, uh, at best. So it means that regarding the context we have considered, in fact, we cannot use cryptography or steganography for an efficient data leak, uh, data leak or data exfiltration. So this is the reason why it is necessary to consider more sophisticated techniques, and I will consider malicious cryptography and malicious mathematics. In fact, it is an emerging field that I have created in 2012, coming from the or, um, as uh, the Jung and Jung's uh, cryptovirology, but it was very limited because, in fact, they only consider uh, the case of extortion malware, which consists, uh, which was a prefiguration of ransomware. It is not that you can do more. In fact, the malicious cryptography and malicious mathematics is the interconnection of the attack techniques on one side and the cryptology and mathematics on the other side for their mutual benefit. You can do a lot of things. I have just given a few uh, examples from super malware that are able to propagate optima uh, optimally uh, to enforce uh, sophisticated self-protection techniques or to, uh, to protect or become invisible. 
You can also use complexity theory uh, or computability theory to design really uh, undetectable malware. Uh, you can use malware to perform cryptanalysis operation. You can do recon uh, in target environment. For example, we have designed a few years ago uh, techniques that enable malware to, to identify the kind of the series of processor and be able to choose whether they attack or not, depending on the brand or the model of the processor. And finally, uh, malicious mathematics includes also the design of cryptographic trapdoor. If you want to have a clever example uh, and sophisticated example, have a look to our presentation of Black Hat Europe in 2017. We have designed a, a, a block encryption algorithm very similar to the AUS with uh, the same key size and with a trapdoor that enabled to, uh, to, to, to break the cipher in less than 30 seconds. So, let us now consider non-trivial denable cryptography. It is very, it is important because um, most of the attack will be performed uh, uh, by means of malware. So we have the risk that the malware can be analyzed and reveal uh, the secret of the attack. So denable cryptography consists in producing two. A different plain text from a single cipher text with two different keys. This is one of the application. But the only known case is trivial. It, by use of one-time paths, it supports that you use random second as long as the two different plain text, so two different random sequence, and you sort them bitewise. It is not possible since you have to embed the random sequences into the malware uh, code, and of course, there, there will be a recovered during the um, reverse engineering step. So, uh, we managed to solve this problem by using a deterministic algorithm with short keys. Short means the same size as usual uh, encryption algorithm from 1 to 128 to 256 bits. And we do the same. It means that uh, from uh, a given ciphertext and from the same algorithm, using two different keys, key one or key two, we can produce two different uh, plain text, P1 and P2. And this scheme has been extended to uh, three plain text, but of course, key can be ex extended for a, a larger number of plain text. So, uh, from a, a sec cryptographic security perspective, in fact, uh, we have proven uh, their security. So we cannot guess P1 and P2 from the ciphertext. Uh, or even if we know P1 from P2 or conversely, it is not possible to guess one from the other. The number of applications are quite awesome, uh, uh, and we are currently developing them at Ops for sec. And it comes from code protection, uh, anti-forensic techniques, and multiple communication uh, channels. So let us consider um, a short demo. So we have here the ciphertext here the execution the binaries and the two keys just for, for uh, to show uh, the ciphertext to prove that indeed it is a ciphertext and here the two keys as you can see there are very short keys so now let us decrypt so Okay, and we do the same with the second key. And what you can see that the two uh, plain texts are different. Yeah, here's the first plain text and the, uh, the second one. They are totally different. So it means that we can, from one ciphertext, Using the same small algorithm and considering two different key, we can produce two different plain text. 
So let us come back to the, to the, to the slides. What are the applications? In fact, in our context, we have uh, an environment with a binary code, which is encrypted. And the binary code is able to perform uh, analysis and to determine very precisely, we have a, a very complex different protocol, uh, they are able to determine whether they are currently analyzed, for example, in virtual machine, uh, in DBI, sandbox, and so on, or th if they are in a real environment, may this environment be physical or virtual. So, the malware is communicating with a common, uh, common and control or with the attacker. And if the, uh, the malware say, okay, I am currently analyzed, the one key is, is uh, sent and the malware is decrypting itself um, as a plain text, which is either um, uh, an innocent looking malware or uh, plain text data. But on the contrary, he will receive a key that will produce the real malware. So it means that since the analyst cannot uh, determine, uh, he cannot block the, the identification of a current analysis, uh, it will be, he will never have access to the real malware. So you have here the, 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 the verbal description and what uh, we have to stress on the fact that, of course, we have to, per to embed and to consider secure and complex communication protocol between the malware and the CNC. We have used fingerprint, time index, time obfuscation, random connection, environment, condition, and it means that uh, it is impossible uh, to simulate this uh, communication protocol. And of course, Everything has been uh, um, implemented in such a way that the malware itself is clueless with, uh, with respect to some to the most important protocol uh, parameters. So now that we have uh, a malware which is able to uh, enforce this attack without being uh, detecting and analyzed, let us see how to uh, enforce all techniques. So the very first case, we have plenty of examples and we, we did a lot of experiment. Uh, we first consider metadata. And it is very interesting because most DLPs do not check metadata. And so uh, they don't even consider, for example, some format languages or internals. So you can do a lot of things by considering these internals or the, these formats and metadata. Uh, it means that documents, Excel, PDF, and so on, there are very inter uh, interesting uh, to be uh, considered a natural carrier for data exfiltration. Of course, you can even be more clever uh, by splitting your exfiltration through different uh, uh, documents. Here, a very simple uh, case. I have taken one PDF file, an academic paper on the internet, and I have hidden here a secret, secret uh, message, which is, uh, however, in plain text. And you, uh, and you can open the PDF, there is no alert. Um, uh, of course, here I have, I have let the data in, in plain text in order uh, for visibility purposes. May they, uh, we can apply we, uh, what is coming next. Of course, if you suppose that there are some document integrity in place, so you can create these, those documents from scratch, it means that you will bypass uh, the integrity checking. So, the next step is not to consider plain text, as in the previous example, but uh, to use to mimic entropy and statistical profile. Why? Because Generally, DLPs could, most of them do not, uh, could enforce very sophisticated statistical and entropy analysis. So you must mimic for your exfiltrated data 
uh, you must mimic what uh, uh, an innocent looking uh, document would, uh, uh, would look like. So you can, the general approach, you have a key dependent transformation of the data. You must prevent any manual analysis in order to recover the secret keys, of course, and you can be able to mimic and simulate any target statistical environment. In the rest of the talk, we will focus on the most simple distribution you can consider and Gram profiles, but we have currently worked on more sophisticated profiles. So, for the security management, in fact, if you use a key dependent transformation, for example, encryption or a statistical profile mimicking, uh, you have to protect the key. Just suppose once again that the malware will be analyzed. So the solution we have developed is use random keys generated from the environment. And in this case, uh, we consider for example key size of 40 bits, which is um, large enough in order to prevent exhaustive search for the attacker and for every file used in order to exfiltrate data. Of course, it is possible to use encryption algorithm with backdoor. And it is very convenient because in this case, you can use a longer key size. So, since it is rather um, complicated mathematics, uh, let us sketch the general approach. You have data to exfiltrate which have a given um, data uh, profile. In fact, for example, PDF or and so on. And you want to exfiltrate data by mimicking some target data profile. For example, text file. You want to exfiltrate PDF uh, under the form of text file. For that, you have to consider an intermediate profile and the combination of the two uh, statistical profile will enable to, to create document following the target data profile. So in fact, from a mathematical point of view, we have to consider what we call the joint entry profile uh, in order to combine them into the resulting and target data profile. So any book of information theory uh, will give you the basics, the introduction about what joint entry profile is. So let us consider uh, examples. It is very lame, but it is for you uh, just to understand easily. Just imagine I want to uh, embed this secret message. Of course, we, we, we would first uh, encrypt it, but it is just for the purpose of illustration. The result of transformation towards different text distribution gives or in second order Markov distribution, you will have this text. Of course, if you read it, you, you you, you guess that something is, is odd. But if you consider a first Marco order mark of word distribution, you now obtain something that it is closer, far closer from the English. So these two, uh, these two uh, very simple examples show uh, uh, very simply how we can proceed. But uh, recently, we have achieved an embedding rate of nearly 30%, which is far higher than if, uh, any undetectable uh, steganography um, uh, techniques, uh, and as that without detection. It means that it's very, very efficient. So we can have a dif different evolu evolution and with more complex model and distribution, we have managed, so they are far more complex to, uh, to explain, uh, but uh, we succeed in defeating even manual uh, analysis. It means that even if the analysis takes time to read every document, uh, you will not be able to, to guess that one document more than uh, one other is containing something uh, special. So if you want an uh, example, uh, 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 I will send you a sample. So 
there are a lot of possibilities and you have here uh, what can be done very simply. And at the present time, it is impossible to prevent this. And as far as you uh, implement and consider uh, these techniques and no DLP tool uh, is able to detect this nowadays. And it is, I don't think they, 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 will, uh, they will ever do. So now let us deal with the last last uh, case when we have a hijack in a encrypted channel in place. So most of the time, uh, for example, in, in sensitive military network, uh, you have the attacker, the malware, has to, uh, has to uh, cope with an existing IPsec VPN. Generally, it means uh, I will... Uh, uh, thing to former known attacks uh, like in Iran. In fact, uh, we support that the malware is uh, put into the target environment with a USB stick. But now uh, he has to um, to cope with the IPsec channel for the uh, data uh, transmission between two sensitive entities. So we are going to use covered channels and this technique is very uh, 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 is very efficient even on very complex tra traffic. Uh, the first development uh, was made in 2008 and has been uh, updated last year. Uh, and the first version has been presented at Kansek West uh, 2011. So we are considering the um, the ESP in transport and tunnel mode. So the slide just to recall what we are talking about, but. I suppose that you are uh, very familiar with this. So in fact, in this part, it is encrypted. So even if you transmit something from the attacker's perspective, we, are, uh, we try to uh, wiretap the channel, it, you will have encrypted data. So here you have, uh, we consider ECM, ICMP ping packets. So, but you can of course consider similar other uh, data. Uh, but this method is simple and uh, illustrative in, uh, in us, and it works, it still works. So, the general attack scheme, you have the two entities exchanging data with an uh, I, uh, encrypted tunnel, uh, tunnel, channel, IPsec. And the attacker can only wiretap, observe the channel, but he cannot decrypt the data since he has not the key. So, we are going to use a pink legs method and an optimized one. In fact, first we have established, build a one-to-one -one correspondence between data character to evade and ICMP packet size, because most of the protocol do not practice padding. It means that the, the, the packet size is something uh, which is uh, very, uh, that can vary. So, the aim is to do like Morse code to code uh, data to evade, uh, data to evade in order to um, uh, to use the different size of the packet. So. So sorry for the interruption, but uh, uh, there are some meteorologic uh, issues. So, um, in fact, each character we want to exfiltrate is uh, encoded uh, by a packet size. In order to extract, to be able to extract, in fact, uh, we use five repetition codes in our case. So we repeat every character, uh, key time, in our case, key or five. Um, of course, you can play on the parameter key. Um, we use dedicated traffic tags like begin and top stack, and 
we have uh, implemented other uh, impl um, uh, optimization in order to uh, to be to increase uh, uh, the capability of decoding. So here it is a simple version. For example, uh, a packet size of 20, uh, 32 bits will return uh, this character and so on. This new uh, equivalence has been built in last year in order to adapt to uh, uh, some IPsec routers uh, uh, compared to the 2008 uh, version. So, on the attacker, we possibly observe the packet flow. We extra extract suitable packet size and we use a maximum likelihood decoding due to the fiber revision uh, code. And of course, we decode once we have this. The, the, the interest of fiber revision code uh, is that they are very powerful in most cases. Uh, of course, they are rather resistant up to a certain limit to noise because your transmission can have noise and you have the normal transmission of data. But you can use some optimization in order to increase your decoding uh, efficiency. Just imagine that we want to code the, the sentence, Salut, comment ça va aujourd'hui? How do you, uh, how are you today? And we are going to uh, exp to show different results uh, depending on the traffic load uh, with respect to the time. In fact, here you have no residual error, and to extract the data, you need to transmit to transmit the. Uh, it takes one hundred forty-five seconds. Normally, it should be detected by good IDS. Here we have a, diff, uh, a random load of one uh, kilobit per second, and uh, and um, the total uh, transcription time is a bit higher. But in this case, we have tested it; it is no longer detected by IDS. Another case with random burst. We have still a few errors, but it is possible to. Uh, to cope with the final message, and with random burst. Uh, so in any cases, we were able to recover the the um, to recover the the sentences and uh, with manual verification to access to the message. So there are possibly uh, other optimization. But once again, if you uh, it would need more maths, but you can use more sophisticated data synchronization or tagging techniques. Here, for example, you have another version from the uh, better and one-to-one uh, -one character size mapping, and so on. So, if you have, uh, if you are interested in the mathematical uh, description and the proof of efficient encoding, you have everything here. You have different other uh, evolution. I will let you read this. And just to conclude, in order to keep time, so if you want to exaggerate data without detection, IDS, DLP, flow analysis is still easy. But you have to consider very sophisticated uh, techniques uh, in order to uh, remain undetected. Uh, I would like to stress on the huge potential of malicious mathematics cryptography. And I'm very concerned about the, the evolution of numeral technology, uh, if it's not the case. But uh, I'm convinced that we, we will have to face um, attacks who are quite impossible to detect, provided that the attacker um, is mastering these uh, malicious and uh, mathematics and cryptographic techniques. Uh, it means that many things are no longer at the security, I mean, by detection techniques, but uh, at the security architecture, data assessment, tight right management. It means the uh, computer uh, security at, at, at environment level. There is a solution, but which is 
very time consuming, it would consist in systematically recording and transcoding all outbound data. So thank you for your attention. Once again, I was, I was very sorry not um, to be here with you. And if you have questions and answer, please send me through email. I will be very happy to uh, exchange with you and to give you answer and references. I have a very nice PhD 11 event. And thanks to the organi organizer for having my, selecting my paper. Bye.